thing that I want to talk about with you guys is how we can do business with our local state governments, specifically here in the United States. I do know I have clients in other countries, but I want to talk about the huge advantage that is in the, in the marketplace today. A lot of people don't know this, they don't see it, and y'all can see my board now. Is it working good? Someone come off. Yes, sir. Okay, beautiful. So this is just recapping everything that we just discussed. And the thing that I want to share is what is a, a certified business enterprise and why everyone in here that has a business, I don't care what kind of business it is, you should absolutely make this on your top priority list. And this has to do with your standing in the United States. You know, Nick touched on jurisdiction. He touched on authority. He touched on access, right? When we're starting businesses, oftentimes for any small business owner in this room, or when you first start a business, one of the major things that you lack is access, right? That's one of the biggest things you lack access, you lack financial capital, you lack network, you lack authority, you lack credibility. Whereas this particular certification right here called a certified business enterprise, also known as a small business enterprise, also known as a minority business enterprise. And if you are a woman is a WMBE, a women minority business enterprise, or just a women business enterprise. That's where you own over 50% of the company that you're operating. You can, gain access just from the certification alone, regardless of how good you are in your business, regardless of how many followers you have, regardless of how much money you have saved in the bank, regardless of your experience, this right here, certified business enterprise from what I've been learning, it's like, it's like having the keys to the kingdom in your hand in terms of the United States. Imagine your customer is the US government. Imagine that. Imagine being a wife coach, a financial coach, uh, a marketing expert like Alex Alboran. Um, I know I see my, my friend Prince in the house. I know you got a business and I see other clients. I see Joel, um, a Pearl, uh, whom I just spoke to today. You got a business. I think Ronnie, I think you're working on something. If I'm not mistaken, I'm looking at some other names in here. If you have a business, please put it in the chat that you, you know, you're, I know Mark Swede, I see you in the house. Um, if you have a business, please comment the name of your business, right? And like, what does it do, right? Quick, little short sentence. Name of your business, what does it do? Even my leaders in the house, just, you know, put that there um, and let's, let's blow up that chat so people can see. And again, looking at this, opportunity here. I'm going to show you uh, my screen, some tabs, and I'll definitely copy and paste the links, put them in the chat. But what I've been learning about is basically when you get this certification, you're letting the government of the United States and your local county government, your local state and county, you're notifying them that, hey, I'm a business owner. I'm here. Hello. Right. You go into their registry. Right. And then you literally turn the key and there is a access that you receive upon certification, like immediately upon certification, you become a government contractor, which you now have access to government jobs, right? Um, through a portal of hundreds of thousands of jobs all over the United States that you can bid on, that you can, you know, access and put a bid on that particular job. I'll use me for an example. Let's say there's a corporation in South Florida, in Broward County specifically, that's the county that I live in. And let's say there's uh, a, a business of um, 150 employees or whatever, and they put an ad out. Um, please mute your mic if you can, um, whoever that was, please mute. But you put an ad out, uh, or I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Sugar, y'all help me here, where was I? Local county business owner, right? Yeah. So corporation, let's say 150 employees and that corporation is specifically looking for a financial coach or financial advisor, financial consultant to uh, talk to their employees about HSAs, Roth IRAs, IRAs, qualified retirement plans, 
life insurance. And so you and I that are not certified in this room, we would never see that job because that job gets posted on this particular portal, right? And I'm going to show you what that looks like. And it's like this, this very secure, unique access that the government has. And what's also really interesting is they have laid aside a percentage of money and jobs specifically for small business owners, right? So I was recently at a conference in my local area and they were saying how 25% of all government contracts that happen in Broward County specifically are set aside for small business owners, right? And then it goes and narrows into if you're black owned business, minority owned business, women owned business, then it gets even more niche. And as you get into these pockets of minority business owners, black owned business, women owned business, the number starts to lessen tremendously, right? And then the number is even less in terms of those minority women, black owned businesses that are actually certified in their local county and state. And so you get the certification, whether the job or the government opportunity job, whether it relates to your business or not, you have the eyeballs, you can gain access, right? And you can subcontract the work to another business and you get paid for that work. Very similar to what Alex was saying earlier, how he put up his hands. He said, look, no calluses, right? Where he's, he started a business, right? And now he's subcontracting, hiring other people to do the work. And then he facilitates and get paid for that action, for being a facilitator, right? If he was to become a certified business enterprise, all that business that he cannot serve, because he just got done uh, earlier saying how he's literally swamped with business, that's money on the table that he could absolutely access by subcontracting it out to other people and getting paid for that, right? With that certification. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and share my window. Let's see, pull up Safari. <laughs> So first, and Denzel, thing. while you're pulling that up, if I can, can you hear me? Yeah, dive in, dive in. What you got? Yeah, no. So I just wanted to add because you mentioned, you know, the whole subcontract thing, and I would say that's what most businesses are. I mean, if somebody owns a McDonald's franchise or ten McDonald's franchises, if they own an auto repair shop, if they own like a real business, mm -hmm. the owner themselves, they physically, it's impossible for them to do the work with every customer. Right. It's impossible. So I think people just need to shift their mindset in terms of like, it's good to, let's say in the beginning, do the work, understand what it takes. But eventually you really just want to be in the middle, whether you call yourself a contractor or just a yeah. business owner, whatever it is, but you don't really want to be making the Big Macs every day, seven days a week. Um, yeah. and, then, and that's where you can go from having one to five to 10. So yeah, people just need to think about just becoming marketers and salesmen or saleswomen. And that's really where the money's to be made in any industry. Oh, you're absolutely right. And, and um, for those that are, are listening, even look at myself, like I'm Denzel Rodriguez. I provide financial coaching and consulting and I have courses, but then I have Shinora who does X, Y, and Z. And then I have Alex that does ABC. And then I got Nick that's doing one, two, three. And then I got Dr. Eddie doing this. And I got to tell you, there is a lot of money in between those transactions that I receive simply referring, affiliating, referring, affiliating, referring myself and affiliating myself with these other businesses. So I'm, I'm saying, Hey, Shinora, I can't do this. Oh, but you can. Oh, Hey, Alex, I don't, set up YouTube channels and I don't do marketing, although I know how, but I don't. So when my clients ask about it, I push them to you. And then for that, Alex says, Hey man, thanks for that client that you sent me there. They were freaking awesome. Um, their finances are great. So I didn't even have to sell to them. It was just straight up, straightforward. They loved it. They, they already kind of knew me. Uh, so I'd love to, you know, share my appreciation in the form of currency, right? Boom, here's money. And then I take that money and I safely steward it in the kingdom, out of the kingdom and everything in between, right? So these are the financial opportunities that I'm seeing in the marketplace. And so now that I got my uh, screen pulled up here. This is the uh, Small Business Administration. This is like the nationwide website, right? So when you're on here, I think if you go to sba.gov, you'll probably land here and you wanna go to, there's this business guide and then there's funding programs, right? 
But under business, <laughs> under business cry, uh, uh, go ahead and mute yourself, please. Um, whoever that was, please mute. Um, you go to, let's see, I forgot where I was. I know like even at the basic levels of just launching your business, applying for all these licenses, but there's a tab somewhere on, oh yeah, on this side here where it says grow your business, where it talks about, um, see this women owned business, native American owned business, veteran owned business, LGBT owned business, rural minority owned business. So I say, all right, um, I'm a minority. Boom. I come here and there's so much services that the U.S. government has readily and available that a lot of us are not tuning into and we're getting sold and we're we're hiring high ticket coaches for tens of thousands of dollars on a hope and prayer that I'll have the wherewithal to do it. And I got to tell you, there is free valuable resources right here that you can at least in the beginning i got nothing against the gurus i love them i'm a guru myself that's what they you know that that's eventually what happens so i got nothing against gurus high ticket coaches i myself provide high ticket servicing I got nothing against it the issue is if you got no money and then you throw it on a paypal account in zero percent six months and then expect results within two you're setting an unrealistic expectation where you could have gone to the source <laughs> and the source in this case is the u.s government providing these opportunities so there's counseling and training funding programs you just start clicking on these links and see where it sends you now i'm going to share with you some of the things that i've done myself right where i'm engaging in this process myself and what it looks like and there is some preliminary cost involved in this but when the things that you're paying for is things that you're going to have like forever in your business if you plan on being in business 20 30 40 years this is phenomenal stuff to have so this is what in my county, this is what the website looks like. So if you're in South Florida, it'd be Brower.org, right? Or or whatever your county is, .org. And same thing, certification programs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if I want to become a small business enterprise in Broward County, South Florida, they give me a whole checklist right here. They say, here you go. Get these things in line. Corporate federal tax return for previous three years, front page only, or, or if you're a sole proprietorship, um, copies of your individual tax return schedule C for the past three years. Anybody can produce that, right? Copy of all Broward County and municipal business tax receipts, previously called occupational licenses. So I'm pretty sure Alex has certain licenses that he had to obtain to, to do business. And he was saying earlier how there's businesses that don't. So if you don't require a specific license, you don't have to worry about that. Now, there is a specific uh what's called a business tax receipt right and that's right here um and i'll show you guys what that exactly looks like i'm gonna pull up my adobe right here so this is a broward county local business tax receipt right here you see the the finance geek that's my dba that's my fictitious name right here's the business name builder to contributor right owner boom address blah 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 right all this stuff and you can see the the fee to get the Broward County tax receipt. This is what a legitimate Broward County tax receipt looks like. So in your state, it'll have a, a similar version of that, right? So you'll have to get that. Then it says copies of all state and or county competency. Com com oh, can't even say the word, professional licenses, right? Boom, up-to-date detailed resumes of all owners. Now this, I haven't wrote a resume in six years because I've been in business for and the last job I had, I had it for two and a half years. So. I got my girlfriend helping me with that because I was like, babe, uh, how do you write a resume? I forgot. So what happens when you become an entrepreneur, you don't got to you don't got to uh, provide a resume, but you do for the government. That's the biggest, biggest customer. Then it says copy of your current lease for business location. If business is not home based. So my business technically is home based. I'm recording in my uh, uh, apartment, but my business location is a separate address. So I give them that. And then it says copies of three contracts, sales, invoices, or service agreements. Now that's super easy to uh, for me to get. And people like Shinora, who we, we're constantly you know, writing invoices for clients that we take on. So this is like a simple checklist. And there's a department in your county that you can call and they'll specifically walk you through the whole entire process, right? And that's something that I'm working on myself. In addition, um, as you're 
gathering all these documents, it is a tedious task, okay? By no means is this a short-term fix, but this is a long-term solution to get access to high paying jobs, right? Imagine doing what you love on a very big scale. And if you can't do the job, you can subcontract it out because of your keys. You got the keys to the kingdom of the US in terms of their particular process. They got a process. The kingdom has a process. Talk with Nick, right? The church has a process. Same thing, US government, they got a process, right? Um, so uh, in addition to getting those things, there's something that you have to do, you have to become a vendor, right? And when you become a vendor, there's this site called Periscope, or used to be called BidSync. Um, and that's where you see all the different jobs right here. So this is what it looks like. Um, so it's called Periscope something. I'll be sure to copy and paste these links for you guys in the chat. But uh, look at these jobs, right? If you're a regular business owner, you don't have access to this. You won't see this, right? But when you get the you, when you even just start the process, you become a vendor with the US government. Once I obtain the proper certification, I can go ahead and bid on a particular job that I see here, right? And then you're able to um, coordinate uh, certain settings to show certain jobs, right? So this is, what is this? Financial feasible consulting services, independent contractor finance. Like basically I just put a search for anything finance. Um, and then go from there, third party administration of HSA, HRA, and FSA. That has to do with those health insurance savings accounts. Financial consulting services, County of Orange, California. So I'm like, huh, financial consulting services, don't I do that for a living? You know, imagine not having to go and find and market yourself to go get leads, to go make sales, to make an irresistible offering, yada, yada, where you can just have access and get the job, right? And then you bid on it and you get paid at a very, very, very high level. In addition to doing this, right, here's the beautiful part. When you set your business up accordingly with the correct uh, processes that the US government has in place, when, when people look you up on the internet, you pop up page one, right? So if you were to type in builder to contributor LLC on your Google search, you will most likely see me. Or if you typed in the finance geek, you will most likely see me on the first page of Google, more, most likely. So not only does this help you on the back end, having all these necessary documents and, and, and certifications and, and papers and all that stuff in play, but then it also helps you on the marketing standpoint. So you're attacking on two fronts. You're working with the biggest customer in the world, which is the US government, and then you can work with people that you market to when you get on social media and all those good things. So <clears throat> I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, come back here and put on the whiteboard and I'm gonna look at some questions. I'm gonna scroll up to the top. Now is the time for uh, Q&A. So I'm just going to scroll to the top real quick and see what you guys are saying. Uh, so I know Jerry Allen, we are the land of the free because of the brave, God bless, USA, entrepreneur, opportunities, yep. Alito Walker says, great advice doc about documentation. So I was talking about that earlier, very important. Uh, Devin, thank you, Denzel, was doing velocity banking, but uh, life happened and credit card got maxed. I make 60 grand now and have an interview this week for a job that can pay me 90 grand. I thank God for his information. Okay, beautiful. So here's what we can do. Quick little prayer on Devin Douglas that he lands that opportunity to go from making 60 grand to 90 grand. Is that like a 50% increase in income? That's a, that's a financial opportunity of itself. You know, I always talk to my clients about, hey, you know, it's great, you know, becoming a content creator and a, a social media influencer and, and you know, start a, a, a side business or whatever. Uh, but I also look at what you've been doing for the last 10, 15, 20, 25 years if you're, you know, in the age range of like 35 to 55, you've got to be, you, you've been doing something for so many years. Can we potentially earn more income on the same very thing that you've been doing? Um, I can't tell you how many moms and dads I talk to that forget to ask for raises and ask for promotions and ask for a higher authority in the company that they work for. The opportunity is there. Corporations, banks, institutions are always looking for talent. Why? Because they have to delegate 
the, the work, they can't do it themselves. So if they can hire a CMO, CFO, COO, right? A regional manager, district manager. I gotta tell you, as you go up the corporate ladder, I got no problem with the corporate ladder either. I, I think you should absolutely take advantage of it, but don't surrender to it because you don't want to work for someone forever. That's not what you've been designed to do necessarily. You've been designed to become. Work means to become who you are, not work to have a good job and a good career and work to da da da. No, work means to become who you are. So if you're not becoming who you are on a daily basis, then the corporate ladder sounds like a, uh, a slave trade, right? It doesn't sound too good. But if you're in your authority, it's the best thing on planet Earth. I talk to many nurses. I talk to many people in their career. They're like, dude, I love my job. I've never started a, you know, a, a side business or whatever. I, I love what I do. I'm very good at it. I talk to a lot of military people. They're like, dude, I'm in the military till, till they take me out, so to speak. You know, like there's people who, that's what they do. I'm like, great. How do we increase our authority in that, increase our income, take that income and put it into cash flow vehicles? Can supplement your work because eventually you can't physically do it forever. You're gonna have to learn how to pivot into a different environment. So being aware of that is very key. So let's pray on Devin that he lands that in the name of Jesus. Okay, so uh, Julia says, uh, Esther, uh, Esther here, first time here. Planning to start Velocity Banking soon. Great information. Digest some good, good, good. Don't forget to drop the link. Okay, that was earlier. This conversation is absolute gold. Aaron says, I have never heard of the bulk of your strategies. That was Nick earlier, jurisdictional finance, ecclesiastical trust, syndicated efforts, blending religion and finance. Unbelievable, blown away. Excellent info. And just a little slight correction there. It's blending kingdom and finance, right? So there's a big difference, right? Because religion is a religious organization, which is a state created entity, 501c3. But when, yes, you deal, when you deal in ecclesiastical jurisdiction, ecclesiastical sovereign state, you're dealing with state versus state. It's a higher level. State is what it is versus a state that can create an entity under the state. So when you're dealing with ecclesiastical state, think of it as equal to United States of America, equal, equal to Canada, equal to Australia, equal to Japan, any country. The, the state is what it is. And then within that, you have an ecclesia, AKA a church. The church represents the state. The state is created by the almighty. In the United States, you have the founding fathers who drafted, put together the constitution. It's like a living, breathing document. It's literally living and breathing, right? And it's evolving. Very same thing. So very good stuff there. I like that. Um, thank you, Nick, for putting the information there. Uh, process, thank you, Shinora. Very encouraging. And our community needs your services. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right, so Shinora put her links there. Great. Appreciate that. Um, and now I'm seeing everybody's different businesses. Okay, cool. We got real estate investors in the house, transporting businesses, automotive businesses. Like this, this is amazing stuff. Imagine us all coming together, helping each other out. This is the whole point of this meeting right here. And I'm gonna work my way to try and do more of these on a, on a consistent basis. Alex put his information, great. All right. We got independent travel agent, wonderful. I'm pretty sure that business is probably coming back now strong. A lot of people wanting to travel. We got a personal fitness trainer in the house. Love it. Mark Swede, how you doing? Can you come off, can you come off mute and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you've been doing? I know you've been a long time client working together. How's how's your business going? Because I know you're you're involved in real estate, um, even help people with finance, if I'm not mistaken, if you're still in the house. He's still here. Oh yeah, he's here. If you can, if you can, that's okay. Um, uh, Devin says this is being recorded. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, thank you, Pearl. Awesome. Okay, any questions from any of the leaders that spoke? Myself, I know I just like turned on the fire hose and just threw a bunch of stuff at you. Obviously, you can watch the replay and say, okay, no, I, I like what Dr. Eddie said, I'm gonna start there. Or I like what Alex said, or I like what Denzel said, I'm gonna start there. Whole point of this was just kind of exposing you to the different opportunities that I myself am engaging with, getting phenomenal results, positioning myself to have the keys. I seek the kingdom in God's jurisdiction. In the United States, I seek access. That's all I want. I want access. I don't necessarily need to have the things, the materialistic things of this world, but if I have 
access to the things that can produce the materialistic things. Which is better? In my head, access is better. If I can walk into any room and I'm welcome, there's a seat with my name on it right there. Imagine you becoming a certified business enterprise in the jurisdiction of the United States and then being an authorized kingdom ambassador in the ecclesiastical sovereign state representing both jurisdictions because you need both and you're securing your wealth and assets in a guaranteed safe location which has protection from God Almighty himself but also Pharaoh. Pharaoh is in today's terms the the global powers of the world, United States being one of them. So imagine if the strongest global powers on planet Earth, both evil, good and all in between, created and defined and codified the jurisdiction that your faith believes in. Imagine that. And then they say, "Look, we ain't going to touch you no matter what. Our our code, our law says we can't touch you. We can't touch your assets. We can't tell you what to do, when to do. We can't tell you when to praise and worship. We can't tell you what vaccine you need to take and what which one you can't. We can't tell you where you can and can't travel. Imagine that. Talk about authority, talk about access. And then on the same token, you've got that protection, say working with Nick or myself, and then you come into United States commercial jurisdiction, you get your LLC, your S Corp, your entities, you go through the process but you do it from the source. What the US government of your local county and state says, not what your best guru friend says on social media. Going to the source. I'm a source guy. I really like going to the source of things. So over the last few years I'm like, you know, what? shoot, uh certified business enterprise seems like the source in my local county, Broward County. If I can get to the source, I could be in comparison to a 20-year vet that's a financial coach, a 25-year financial certified planner with all the titles and all the documents, but if he or she is not certified, they don't have access. Isn't that amazing? That's pretty interesting how smart people can be. But without access, who are you? I I, I can't identify you if you don't have proper jurisdiction. So, this is key stuff. Key stuff. All right. Um do we have information for Dr. Eddie? Um I think he posted earlier. He might have dropped by now. Um I'll be sure. I'm going to find it for you guys. Well, if you go to my website, thenzelrodriguez.com/resources, you will see Dr. Eddie and his Relationship Academy, and that's how you can reach him there. So I'll I'll post that. Um let's see. Scroll down. Thanks for all that you do, Robert Kelly, Elaine Elaine Nunley, how are you? Are you able to come off mute? How are things going with you? I know you're in the insurance space. How are you? I'm well. How are you, Denzel? You, uh, you, you really, really floor me. You, you, you're so awesome, and I'm very, very pleased that you invited me to this awesome forum with all of your guests and very valuable information that, as Shanora said. Um, is not taught in our community and very much needed and a lot of information that is there if we're not directed to it we won't go and search for it so i'm very very pleased that you invited me and uh i'm going to i'm continuing to follow your steps in your lead that certified uh business enterprise correct yep in, in your case it would be women business enterprise wbe okay women business enterprise yeah thank you so much and thank you very much for all of your guests who spoke um i did take a lot of uh notes and we'll be following up with several of you thank you thank you and by the way um If you guys saw someone comment, um you liked it, you can click on their name in the chat and you can send them a direct message right here in the chat, okay? You know, more than welcome to to do that. All right, Ivory Browns. Ivory Brown says access is better. I like it. John says I have a church. How can I take advantage of the information shared tonight? I'm pretty sure you're talking about what um some of the things that Nick said, so he already put the links there. Check that out. Put that in your notes. Send to my direct message on that topic as well just in case. Yeah, or yep, there you go. Send a direct message right to him. He's right here, still here. Appreciate that. Um Jamal Johnson, how do I get more information about judicial finance or or jurisdictional finance? Did I type that correctly? Yeah, you did. You did. Um 
Hey Nick, you know, um, there's probably like no content on the internet regarding ecclesiastical jurisdiction and things like that. If mm -hmm. you have any um, articles or any types of uh, documents outside of ICOVEST Academy that you mm -hmm. could maybe share with us, I think that'd be super cool. I've only come across a few things. Um, my girlfriend even found a few law students that wrote theses on 508C1A and ecclesiastical right. law. But in terms of like actual modules and, and courses and training, I have not found to this day other than what ICOVEST Academy has to offer. They have a, a whole entire module system that's in really in chronological order. Um, mm -hmm. But if you know of anything, Nick, that you could, you know, an article or a link that you could just send people to that, hey, this is, would pique your interest, I, I think that'd be cool. If not, that's fine. Absolutely. I'll look for some, try to drop it in the chat before we leave. Awesome. All right. Uh, thank you for the invite. I look forward to working with you someday, becoming friends. Absolutely. Uh, Andy, aren't you a client? I know that name, Salazar. Okay. Jamal says, boom, be tapping in. Cool. All right. I got one more thing to share and then we can close it out. We're approaching on two hours now, so I don't want to take too much of your time, but you know, I love to talk. All right. Last opportunity, which is more of a, in, in terms of your personal financial operations, in terms of how we're operating and how we're offsetting borrowing costs. This is something that I've known about for a few years, but never actually implemented it until now. I'm going to start uh, very, very shortly, which has to do with velocity banking and infinite banking together. Okay, I've done very few videos on this, um, not a whole lot of case studies. It's it's a little more of a high level, in my opinion, a little bit difficult. Even I myself in my own finances somewhat kept things a little separate, but also I've integrated it on a, on a small scale. But now um, I've had my policies for four years now, okay? And I've accumulated in one of my policies, I have a little over 201K in cash value, and I've got roughly 87,500 in loans, okay? In policy loans at a simple interest rate, 5.66%. This is something that I shared with the ICOVEST community already. So they got first dibs on this. Now I'm sharing it with you guys. For those who are in the house who have cash value life insurance policies in place, this may be something to consider considering the interest rate environment that we're in now today. It's going up, right? It was just a few months ago, people were getting mortgages at two and a half, three and a half percent. And does anybody know where it's at now? I'm seeing like 5% rates, mortgage rates, four and a half, five and up. I'm seeing, I'm seeing HELOC rates go up now. Interest rates are jumping. Now, what's really unique about life insurance space is the, the interest rates do not fluctuate as fast. It fluctuates on, a, on an annual basis, right? And that can mean a, a big difference depending on where you're at in your finances, right? So we're gonna look at my numbers specifically, where I'm at. Like I said, I got one policy, 200K plus in cash value. 87,500 in policy loans at 5.66%. With this amount of cash value, I can go to a bank. Minimum required, I'd say you need to have at least 75K plus in cash value, preferably. But I can now approach a bank, in this case, not just any bank, I'm gonna write the name of them. Bank Corp is the specific bank that I'm looking at, and they provide what's called an insurance backed line of credit, IBLOC. Another term for it is a cash value collateral loan. When I go to the bank, I can access up to 95% of my cash value as collateral. So I assign my cash value policy to the bank. The bank gives me a line of credit up to 95% of however much cash value I have in there, right? So let's say we want to get the whole thing, right? 201 times 95%. Say we get 190K. So I can get 190,950 as a line of credit access, right? I don't have to pay no interest until I use it. That's how the line of credit works. That's a phenomenal part. And the interest rate is based off the Wall Street Journal Prime, which currently I believe is 4%. 
And depending on how much cash value you have, in my particular case, they minus a half a percent, the prime rate. So it's 4% minus a half all the way up to 1.25%. So if I had over a million dollars in cash value, I could get an interest rate of 2.75%. So anywhere between as low as right now, today, these numbers can change and will change anywhere from 2.75 to 3.5%. So this is what I'm entitled to with my cash value. So I can go from a paying insurance to the insurance company of 5.66 and drop it all the way down to 3.5. That's a 2% drop, right? Two points, that's huge, right? Let's actually see what that number looks like. If I had, and here's the cool part, I don't have to pay this off. I can have the bank just move, I can move the line of credit, they take 87.5 out, pay that off, right? So 87,500 times 5.6, so 4,952.50. That interest is charged on my policy on an annual basis, right? So it's simple interest amortized, 4,900. If I were to move it into the line of credit, I got the credit limit, 190, let's say, but now I owe 87.5. 87.5, 3.5%. I just went from 49 down to three grand. And this is assuming that Denzel just consolidated debt. But is that what we do in this community? Is that all we do is consolidate debt? No, what do we do? Boom. Velocity banking. I can get an insurance backed line of credit on my business. Uh oh. So I basically have a business line of credit. I now owe 87.5 and now I can do velocity banking, dumping my income, right? So you got to know your four major numbers. This is where I'm rocking at right now. Zero debt and I'm as low as 5K. My cash flow has gone down in the last, really earlier this the year up until now due to the finance geek moving out um you know shinora was talking about the household right and how we need to rebuild and manage uh good financial households so even your very own personal finance geek has gone through the separation of households families breaking up why lack of knowledge people perishing lack of knowledge uh traumas, financial traumas, spiritual traumas, you know, so there's a, a, a multitude. You've got, you know, my own family, you've got people that struggle with money their whole entire life. So there's trauma. Then you got people that don't know the word. They don't have access to the keys to the kingdom. So their spirit is in balance, imbalanced. So they experience anxiety. They experience stress. They experience worry. They experience fear. They experience doubt. So you got that, right? And then third, because they're under the jurisdiction of the United States and they're operating in the highest tax code possible, which is ordinary income tax, where you work as an employee. So now you're suffering in both jurisdictions. Mm, not don't look too good. It's only a matter of time before your family breaks, right? So even in my own household, all this knowledge I share with you guys, even in my own household, broke. People just break. It, it, it's not your fault, my fault. No, it's we have to hold ourselves accountable, right? So some of the things that Shinora talks about, Dr. Eddie, on a spiritual level, mental health level, these are things that we must address, you know? And I have a great uh, example of what it looks like when families come together, right? I'll give you a quick example and then we'll come back to this right here. I have a family of five that I work with, been working with them for a few years now, family of five. It's it's a, uh, we got a, a daughter. That's the main client that I work with. And then she has a husband. Then it's her mom and dad, and then her grandpa. This is the coolest, this is one of my coolest case studies, like ever. Um, I love it. Family of five, so daughter, daughter has a husband, daughter, daughter's mom and dad. So we're dealing with her mom and dad. And then she has a grandpa. They all, um, operate as one in velocity banking. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life in the velocity banking world. It's one of the coolest things. This is a uh, uh, black household, right? If I'm not mistaken, pretty sure. I think they might be like either Jamaican, Bahamian. I'm not sure. I forget. Um, so you've got three generations, right? Grandpa, mom and dad, daughter, three generations becoming one 
and they came together and said, we trust this kid on YouTube. So we hired him, the daughter did. And she somehow convinced her husband, her mom, her dad, her grandpa to combine all their incomes in the household. And they all equally um, got a debt tool, a debt weapon. So mom and dad has a house, daughter has a house. And I think grandpa lives with mom and dad, if I'm not mistaken. So mom and dad has a HELOC. So they have the debt tool, right? Mom and dad, and everybody has income and they somehow, some way, even I was astonished. I mean, I facilitated, I said, okay, here's the most efficient way to do this. I think <laughs> this is me talking as if I knew, but I've never done this before, but here they are putting it together. They send all their incomes into the HELOC and then together they gave me four or five different spreadsheets, financial spreadsheets. And I looked between all the different spreadsheets and I said, okay, um, we got to pay off mom's debt here, the car. Then we're going to jump to grandpa. Then we're going to jump to dad, then back to you, daughter, then husband, then back to mom. And so we're making chunks in accordance to the most efficient way to recapture cash flow, save money on interest, build that credit and increase income. So they've set aside their differences, came together under one blood covenant, so to speak, right? One authority. They're listening to the authority over their finances. Me, I'm guiding them and they're obeying. And it's like, in, in, in a way, I'm, I'm jealous for them. I'm not jealous of them. I'm jealous for them. Like if, if I could figure out a way to get people who are living in households where husband's not on board, wife's not on board. I know a lot of you in the house and, and others that will catch the replay. It's just wife doing velocity banking or it's just husband doing velocity banking. I know this all and too well. And here's an amazing example of this family coming together and equally agreeing that yes, we're gonna syndicate, combine all our cash flows and pay off mom's debt first because the highest interest under that particular bloodline household, right? And then from that cash flow, then we jump to dad, then jump to daughter, then jump to grandpa, bum, 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 right? Over and over again. I can't tell you how much debt they paid off. It's an insane amount. And they've acquired other debt tools along the way. Um, I, I think they even paid off one or one household already, if I'm not mistaken. They're, I, I barely talk to them because they're doing so well. So that is an example. I think, you know, in Shinora's Shinora world, in her world of coaching, I'm pretty sure she will address how can that actually happen? Like I'm providing the financial strategy for it. What is the mental capacity needed to surrender what you think you know about money and what you think you know about your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, putting aside your differences of what mommy and daddy did to you because mommy wasn't there, or daddy wasn't there or because of this happened and this trauma and that trauma, right? Imagine if you could set aside the differences and become one, lest they become one, can't use them, right? I think that's scriptural, correct me if I'm wrong. But coming back to this, I got a little sidetracked. I get a little excited, sorry. We got recap, cash value, four years into the policy. I know a lot of you have policies they've been funding for a few years now, especially you've been working with me since like 2018, 2019. Here's my loan interest rate. Here's the loan and here's the interest rate on the line of credit that I'm going to obtain cost of borrowing. If I borrowed the whole 190 would be that we don't do that in the velocity banking world, right? We don't over leverage ourselves. So we do roughly 66% or two thirds of the line of credit, right? What does that look like? 190 K times bomb 125. Well, Denzel's only in debt, the 87 on the policy. So I'm just going to chunk that. So now it's, we go from 3K, 87.5, boom, three and a half percent. Oh, okay, I did that right. So that's 3,062.50 on 87,500, right? Assuming all I did was consolidate. Velocity banking comes in, income in, right? Expenses out, cash flow stays, right? That would be like the low end number. My income is more higher than that. So it's more like 10K stays. Within six to nine months, that line of credit will hit zero. And then it's just a matter of running the bills. And then let's add a little juice to this and say credit cards, 3% cash back rewards on majority of those expenses. I can easily, easily bring that 3000 borrowing costs to zero from the, uh, cash back rewards 
that I average. And I got an email, a lot of you have already seen it already in terms of my living, my uh, living expenses, personal side, and then my operating expenses on the business side. And I break down all the cash back rewards on different credit cards that I have. And I'm averaging around this range. So three to five grand in cash back rewards in one year offsets the borrowing costs on that, the line of credit. Velocity Banking itself brings the 3K down to like 1500 more or less because of all the money going in, right? Money coming out. And then if you want a little more gravy because you're running a business, can the interest on the line of credit be tax deductible? So talk about <laughs> offsetting, offsetting. So now I'm in the green, green, right? We got green here, green here. And then let me not forget that the cash value on the policy itself is earning an internal guaranteed rate of return between two and four percent. 201k times say three percent right in the middle, that's six grand on the internal growth on the policy itself. So green, green, and green, and some more green. And then this is open-ended revolving. Use it whenever I want, whenever I need it. This is a phenomenal strategy for those who have policies in place and you have a significant amount of cash value that you've been building up. And instead of borrowing directly from the policy at the loan rate, you can potentially get an even lower rate from the bank, right? Manage that properly, do velocity banking. Either way, when, as soon as you're able to implement velocity banking on the debt tool, you automatically go faster. You can't necessarily do velocity banking as well with a policy by itself. Why? Because when you make payments and then you request policy loans, there's a bit of a longer transaction process that takes place. And the last thing you wanna do is run into an issue where you don't have the cash in your checking account to pay the credit card off or pay a certain expense because you're waiting on a policy loan to hit, hit your account. So you can do it. It's just a little bit, it's inefficient versus when you can combine the two, IBC plus Velocity Banking to help offset borrowing costs in commercial jurisdiction, this can be highly effective. Now imagine doing this inside ecclesiastical law, inside the ecclesiastical sovereign state with ICOVES. You can, or I should say we can together, we can combine our resources on an even bigger scale. Imagine having a policy with tens of millions of dollars in cash value of which we all come together in common unity and say, we want to acquire a 500 unit property in Georgia, you know, or in Florida, or, you know, in an area where it's most ideal, most cash flow, and the whole thing is tax accepted, right? So this was dealing with US commercial jurisdiction. And I just kind of chimed in on the whole ecclesiastical jurisdiction that can be quite exciting. So I'm done. I'll leave my board on the screen. I'll look at some final questions. Uh, let's see, I must grow up a little bit. We love that you love to talk. Thanks for all the great information. Thank you. Uh, da, da, da. Why would someone get a IB, uh, an insurance back line of credit rather than getting a loan directly from the insurance policy? Hopefully the rate was enough um, to do so. And because of your ability to implement velocity banking a little more efficiently, that's why, okay? You don't have to do it. It's just in my particular case, it makes absolute sense to go from this rate to a lower rate. I'm lowering my already, like I already have it in my finances where technically this interest that I'm paying, I've already offset it by whatever I did with the money, right? Invested it, you know, recaptured it. I've already offset it, but now I can do it even more and even more efficiently through the business, right? So that's why it makes a lot of sense for me. Okay, okay, okay. A loan is one, one dimensional, line of credit is two dimensional. You can pay it on it as Devin speaking and pull money right back out. Loan money can only go in as a form of payments, no withdrawals, correct, right? Kind of like policy loans. The minute you pull it out, you start, you know, uh, getting charged that interest and you can't just quickly throw the money back in and take it right back out. But you can with a line of credit um, and it can be secured, which is really nice. Shinora says, that is incredible. This unity will likely benefit their family for generations. Oh yeah, right over here, right? Just the financial impacts also connects with their ability to remain connected and communicate. Yeah. I mean, I, every time I get on a call with that family, it's all five of them together. I hear them in the background, right? And I'm like, this is like amazing. I can't wait to, to put them and uh, possibly do a collaboration with them one of these days when I get their permission. 
Talk about Kingdom Authority Family of Five Heating Messiah's Wisdom from Matthew 12, 25. I gotta look that up. Aaron says, your uh, Denzel, your financial literacy and prowess continues to rapidly evolve. You never cease to amaze me. Insurance back line of credit is free chicken. Yeah, shout out to all the collaborators tonight. God bless you all. Thank you, thank you. How can we rewatch the video? Uh, Devin, so this uh, will be made because I'm recording on Zoom. I gotta edit it first. Um, but it will be posted in the uh, course, in my course. I'll post it on the, in the chat and um, probably just put it on YouTube as an unlisted video in its authentic raw form. But uh, you'll eventually see this on YouTube, right? Into little clips. Devin says, Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. Matthew 12, 25. Thank you. Appreciate you sharing that. All right. Any final questions, thoughts, concerns? If not, we'll close it out here. Nick, thank you so much for staying the whole time. Um, Shinora, you're still here. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I know others had to jump. Thanks again for the opportunity, Denzel. Yeah, this is fun. Absolutely. Shinora says it's been very fruitful, inspiring discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe, um, and I got to play with this whole idea of building this networking community because most of the time I'm dealing with everybody on a one-to-one -one basis or it's just me and them talking. Um, so I know it can be probably difficult to hear five different speakers talk. So maybe next time I'll just have maybe just Shinora talk for the whole time and then we can like really drill on specific things and then have Nick go and maybe that will be more effective. But I just figured it'd be really cool to have everybody, you know, chime in, say a few words. Let's see, uh, Julia says, I have questions for Velocity Banking and don't know if you have time now. I do, if you come off mute, um, I could probably answer a couple questions, but I would say class is dismissed. It's late, it's 11, 11, so in my time, East Coast, you know, if you're on the West Coast, it's still early, but um, class is dismissed. If you do have questions, stick around and comment them now. If not, I wish you a wonderful evening and good night. But uh, go ahead, I think Esther, if you have a question, if you wanna come off mute, uh, go ahead and ask now or, or comment it. I'll wait and I'll just put my uh, stuff on the board again so you guys can see that, take notes. In terms of velocity banking, infinite banking together, I think this is probably the most efficient way to do velocity banking, infinite banking together especially as your policy matures and gets better, you know? Because that's the beautiful thing about cash value life insurance. In the early years, it's a little bit tough. You're negative the first few years, right? You put money in, you have less to start with. So that is a disadvantage. But once you hit years four, five, six, seven, maybe eight, your initial principal dollars going in starts to break even and you start producing a positive internal rate of return. So that means the cash values are going to start ramping up, getting better internally. And it's going to make sense, more sense that when you do borrow from the cash, you can truly offset it just from the policy earnings itself, right? So in this example, the policy earnings itself, right? That 6K offsets the borrowing cost. But then you add those three other layers, tax deduction, credit card rewards, cash back, and then velocity banking itself, dumping all money in, taking expenses out, cash flow stays. We can manipulate 3.5% to be more like 1% or less. Imagine being able to borrow at 1%. Who wouldn't wanna do that, right? So as you're doing velocity banking itself, right? Most of you guys here are doing that. You got your line of credit, you got your HELOC, wonderful keep those tools, but at some point, you eventually want to start building your own banking system, right? Doesn't hurt, especially if you started on your kids, right? Get policies on them, teach them as they grow, they can already have a banking system in place and never after, never have to borrow from the banks. They can just keep it all within the bloodline. And then you couple that with ecclesiastical jurisdiction. Oh my goodness. Now we're on, we're making strides. 